Yeah, one of the weirder talking points I've heard on and off about EVs is that in the event of an EMP, EVs will be dead and all us electro heads will be unable to get a charge for our EVs, but that folks will be driving around in gas cars and they'll be just dandy. And this notion seems to have hung around since before I started driving EVs. I've had it told to me in person by someone who was convinced that their diesel-powered smog generator would be their mad Maxian transport vehicle of choice, and I most recently and dispiritingly heard it from an interview with a striking UAW worker. So maybe it's time to talk about it? Okay, so aficionados of the dystopian future book, TV show, and movie genre will no doubt be familiar with this concept because, well, it's pretty common. They used to say one nuclear bomb can ruin your whole day. It was sort of a joke until the June morning those terrorist bozos whacked us with an electromagnetic pulse from 80 miles up. You always hear people yapping on how it was all different before the pulse. Land of milk and honey, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, see, that's the general concept. An electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, is a short burst of electromagnetic energy. It can be either naturally or artificially generated. At the small scale, anyone who's had the misfortune to kill a chip or a computer through a static shock has experienced the potential impact of an EMP. The static you build up on your clothes can be enough to kill a computer, which is why, if you're being good when you're repairing components, you'll probably throw on one of these. This is an ESD strap. In that instance, what you're trying to protect yourself from is passing a really high voltage, often kilovolts, but tiny, tiny currents through whatever hardware you're repairing. But it's not just rubbing a balloon on a triple that can cause an EMP. Although I am now stuck wondering if that's why triples stick to the wall. Anyhow, sorry, so there are bunches of things that can cause an EMP, even just flicking a light switch and the spinning of the electric motor in your EV, or frankly the starter motor in one of those archaically powered gas vehicles. That generates an EMP, but this obviously is not the kind of EMP that folks are worried about. But before we get to that, Erin, our amazing illustrator and animator, has just released our Halloween shirt and it is so good I did not even wait for the staff discount to buy it for myself. You can buy it on Redbubble. Go on, I'll wait. Oh, and remember you can also support the channel from one dollar a month. Back to the show. Folks are worried about the kind of things that are basically civilization ending. The kind of things that generate EMPs that they're thinking of are either man-made weapons, nuclear explosions create large electromagnetic pulses, Back when they were first developing nuclear weapons, in between creating crippling depression in Feynman and finding out that half the staff working on the Manhattan Project were spies, they were making sure that the monitoring equipment was well shielded from electromagnetic pulses. Worse, there's a specific kind of nuclear explosion where an explosion at high altitude can create secondary pulses as it interacts with the atmosphere and the Earth's magnetic field. And we know this because we tried it because of course testing nuclear weapons on the planet that we live on is an excellent idea. Humans are geniuses. Sorry, I was distracted there for a moment by our own hubris. Back in 1962, about 250 miles above Johnston Island, the US detonated a 1.4 megaton nuclear weapon and observed that in Oahu, the streetlights and fuses failed and the telephone service was, quote, disrupted on the island of Kauai. So yeah, EMP from nuclear weapons is a thing. You can also just build an EMP generating device. Well, I say that, I mean if you want a sudden unexpected visit from some people dressed very much in black, you can do that. 
What I mean is that it's technically feasible to build a weapon intended solely to release an electromagnetic pulse. And that's not just me talking, that's fact sheet number 41 from the Washington State Department of Health. And of course, there's everyone's favourite disaster scenario, the coronal mass ejection. Why didn't you tell me about the CMEs? This is not a test. This is an emergency broadcast transmission. Yeah. Okay, so maybe those aren't the best films, but coronal mass ejection is when a chunk of plasma and magnetic field gets flung out from the sun's corona into the heliosphere, basically the atmosphere around the sun. As long as it hangs out around the sun, it's not really too much of a problem, but if that ejection makes it to the Earth's magnetosphere, then things can get a little more hairy. You can get geomagnetic storms and occasionally damage to power grids. Back in the late 1800s, there was an apparent ejection large enough to disrupt the telegraph network, which reportedly started fires and shocked telegraph operators. I mean, electrically shocked, not surprised. So what folks are often worried about is that kind of an EMP. The kind that knocks out computer systems, that takes down the power grid, that disables financial systems, and leads to the fall of governments, and that leads to all the electric vehicles and their charging stations go offline or die. Or that's what they're concerned about. And you know what? There's not really a great argument that in the event of a massive EMP EVs might be dead, although they might be better shielded than gas cars because many things in EVs generate EMP themselves. Please don't make me get into the inverse square law to prove that it's safe to be in an electric vehicle because, trust me, we've fud busted that one before. But also, like all modern cars, when they're off, they're not really off. And back in 2004, the EMF Commission in the United States tested a range of vehicles against electromagnetic pulses, and vehicles which weren't on had either no or minimal lasting impact from a significant pulse. That said, running vehicles, by which incidentally I'm referring to gas cars, they didn't have any EVs to test, but an EMP did have significant effects on those gas cars from stalling to persistent faults afterwards. So if you happen to be driving when this theoretical EMP goes off, you might be a bit stuffed. But the important thing about this study is that it basically said old cars have fewer problems, which is the bit that seems to have lodged in people's brains. And that was true, when an old car was a car from the 1980s, a car that sported a mechanically linked carburetor, a set of mechanical points, or maybe ooh, electronic ignition, and the height of its electronic complexity was a blaupunkt auto-reverse cassette deck. But these days, an old car probably contains a raft of poorly shielded CAN bus linked separate computers to control everything, from the screen washers to the power windows. It's got an incredibly complex computer to manipulate fuel and air mixture and valve timing. It's basically impossible to make the thing run without that kind of a device. It's why so many cars get scrapped when simple electronic components die. It's not just a case of tipping some heavily compressed flora and fauna extract into the chambers and making that go bang at roughly the right moment anymore. In this kind of event, those vehicles will be as dead as any others. And look, there's a bigger problem here. Let's say, by dint of the fact that you decided to build your garage as a Faraday cage and you weren't out buying your MREs when the EMP occurred, your car is still running. Woo! Where are you going to get the gasoline to run it? The pumps in gas stations, electronically controlled and powered by electricity from power stations that are computer controlled. The refineries, they are computer controlled. The ships that go to and from the oil rigs or the pipelines that carry the crude oil, they're computer controlled too. Well then, put the ships under manual control. There's no such thing anymore, Duke. Yeah, see, beyond having both Angelina Jolie in and Johnny Lee Miller in, in a dress, which is frankly delightful, and also being a free ridiculously fun film. Hackers is also weirdly right about this. A lot of stuff doesn't have manual controls anymore because it's far, far, 
far, far too complicated to do that. We've built a world that's heavily reliant on computers for even basic functions. And while it aggravates me that it's often cheaper to throw something like this into a circuit rather than install a switch, because it's more flexible and you can make multiple different models with different capabilities or more likely because the company wants to link your toaster to the freaking cloud so that spicy autocomplete can sell you some DRM protected toast patterns, that's the place that we're at. If there's a massive EMP at the level that it disables EVs, the entirety of our infrastructure of our Western world is going to collapse. Electronics in hospitals, banks, supermarkets, governments, all of that will be broken. Ownership records will be destroyed. How you're going to get to the shop is going to be less of a concern than how you get your next meal. So that's that. If there's an EMP, sure, your EV might be dead, but since you'll be honing your hunting skills and making arrows from big round sticks, it doesn't really matter. But I do want to take a moment to say that maybe we can use this fear to nudge people about climate change. Because what people really don't seem to realise is that, sure, a 1.4 megaton bomb detonated high above Kansas would effectively knock out the whole of the US through an EMP. But so will climate change. It has the potential to have these same effects. We've already seen extreme weather events flooding cities, causing power outages, massively disrupting food supplies, massively disrupting all kinds of aspects of our lives. So the next time someone talks to you about EMPs, maybe redirect that fear into something that's an actual problem, and that is coming for us faster than any of us would like. There's no retro computing Easter egg on this video other than my Arduino, because I am going to take a little longer on this next bit. Scrolling by on my right is our list of amazing charged up supporters. And if you're not on the list, we're sorry, there's been some problems with our automated process and we're rejigging our credit setup anyway. So watch this space. Oh, and if you recently joined and your name isn't on the list, we're very sorry too. That list hasn't been regenerated for a while while we try and work out what's going on with these bugs. In the meantime, thank you to all the people listed and to all the people who have joined our Patreon recently. Our ad revenue is still $3,000 less in the last month than it used to be, so you're really helping us stay afloat and avoiding this channel having to close. Thank you, and if you're someone who has $1 or even slightly less to spare, please consider joining us as we're still about $2,500 short every month this YouTube adpocalypse continues. Shoutouts go to our V to G Patreon supporters Alan Tupper, Andrew Martin, Bennett, Elder, Brophy Wolf, Chris Maxwell, Cyprian Laplace, Dan Blair, Gordon C. Hey Esker, John Trammell, Kyle Fox, Mark Eggleton, Peter Dillinger, Rajin Fellows, Sean Tucker, Stefan Fremgen, Stephen Williams, Tesla in the Gong, Paul Bricknell, Tony Moss, Kyle Hodgson, Chris Center, Denny Hyde, Lance Shaw, Linda Irish, Mike Weeder, and Paul Nelson. And finally, big thanks to our off-grid supporters, Paul Conway, Kevin Boroughbridge, Stephen O'Donoghue, Jim Burness, Robert Flannery, Aaron Han, Ellery Hensley, Rory Litwin, JP Fagerback, Dave Kitchen, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, Chris and Michael Johnson, Clay Witt, CPU Freak 101, Eric Knack, Joe Bresney, John Henderson, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Nigel S, Reggie Watts, Will Grayland, and, of course, Ian. Don't forget we make videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday on the main channel, plus Sunday on Take Two. And with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I will see you soon. And as always, keep evolving.